Greetings, everyone. I could not be more excited to welcome you to our first of what I hope will be many monthly book clubs here on the Green Art Channel. I am a huge book nerd. I read so much, and folks are always asking me for book recommendations, especially where to start, uh, which books we can find, some of the more occult botanical information that we are all hungry for, uh, which books are entry-level 101 warm-ups to the work, which books will take us beyond pop herbalism and reductionist uh, herbal magic. And so my hope is that this series will introduce you to many, many of my favorite books and that together we can uh, support these fantastic teachers and authors and learn about uh, what each of us took away from these books and uh, really encourage one another to build our herbal library. So I really kind of went back and forth this month on which books to start with because there are so many and I came to uh, the conclusion that the best place to start is with uh, two books actually. We're going to do two this month that have been indispensable in my practice. They are the books that got me started in a lot of ways, uh, and they are the books that took my work into levels, uh, into depths that I don't think it ever would have if I stuck with uh, the books that were available to, available to me initially. So we will be talking about two books by the incredible Paul Byrell. Uh, Paul, I want to give a little bit of a, a biography. I know it will be imperfect and I'm missing so many parts of his story because he deserves to be celebrated uh, for so many reasons. So I want to, for folks who don't know him as a person, before we get into his books, uh, just tell you a little bit about the person behind the book. So Paul was born in 1945 in Wisconsin and he was the founder of the Lothlorien tradition of Wicca. It was kind of a modern uh, neo-pagan expression of Wicca that was heavily, heavily plant-centric. Uh, so many of his rituals, of his writings, of his charges and invocations, and the way that he celebrated the Wiccan Wheel of the Year were plant-informed. So, uh, you know, I love that. He wrote a book called uh, A Wiccan Bardo, which is a beautiful read for anybody who's interested in that kind of work, the uh, kind of Wiccan neo-pagan witchcraft uh, work. Beautiful, beautiful book if you can find it. He started that Lothlorien tradition in the 1970s. I'm unsure about exactly which year, but I can tell you he started it before I was born, uh, which is pretty incredible that um, even though I came up in the 80s and 90s during the kind of what felt like the renaissance of paganism, there were already people out there who had done the hard work and had laid groundwork for all of this. He, at that same time, started the Rowan Tree Church, which kind of acted as his educational community outreach program, a way for him to legally protect himself in a country that has not always been very uh, nice to, uh, you know, alternative religions, and as a way for him to craft a school uh, for initiates to explore the mysteries in his tradition. So uh, it was a busy dude, very busy, right out of the gate. Paul and his husband, Jerry, uh, did their work from this incredible, expansive 11-acre farm uh, just west of Houston, Minnesota. I always, always wanted to go there and still want to go there, uh, and maybe that will be something possible in the future. There, they kept a literal warehouse of over, I think their library has well over 4,000, probably close to 5,000 books, texts, manuscripts, some very rare. They had a collection, uh, have a collection of beautiful ritual items and sacred spaces. Paul has this amazing vault of waters that he has hand collected from sacred spaces all over the world and other people have collected for him little vials and bottles of all of these different waters from holy springs and sacred mountains and uh, all of this that, that he would use, you know, in some of his workings, uh, very much doing some water magic there. So um, 
I want to mention that Paul, uh, even in his advanced age, has a stunning amount of material on YouTube. Uh, you know, not edited, not scripted, him, Jerry, sometimes other people, you know, you just watch him get up and like turn the camera on and walk away and do his thing. He even shares rituals. You can watch his oftentimes hours long rituals on his YouTube channel. I'm gonna drop some links down in the comments below so that you can go enjoy um, connecting with him directly and hearing his voice and, and feeling his spirit through his videos, uh, which is so important. I uh, personally have been in communication uh, in, in with, with Paul mostly through email and letters and sometimes through phone for maybe the past 15 years or so. And again, really consider him and his work to be foundational as a jumping board for me ending up going in the direction that I went. And he was always very, very uh, encouraging and supportive and, and so many blessings came from him that I really believe uh, I carry, that I really believe have allowed me to do so much of what I've done. Uh, we are always working on the backs of our ancestors. And for me, uh, Paul Byrell is very much an ancestor of this work, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So uh, some other cool stuff that I should mention. Paul started the unicorn, which is, a, you know, kind of a zine it was before zines were cool, uh, a publication and, and originally was, you know, paper only. It had to come through in the mail. He started that in 1977, 1977, so 45 years ago. It's still active and is considered to be one of the longest running Wiccan slash pagan publications in North America. A lot of it he wrote by hand. He was a prolific writer, uh, prolific article writer, researcher, monograph creator. Um, I have been collecting his works again for over a decade. I have binders and binders and binders of his monographs and Materia Medica and, and bits and pieces from his herbal program and I haven't even scratched the surface of getting through all of that. So uh, one day somebody's entire life is going to be dedicated to compiling all of this man's research. It's incredible. He, uh, by the way, also uh, started an herbal study program way before any of it was cool called the Hermit's Grove and it uh, has always been correspondence meaning that you would order one lesson from him and he would print the pages off on demand. You know, I would literally send him an email and say, send me packet 15, uh, you know, out of a hundred or more. Uh, I think a hundred exactly, actually. He would print all those pages out for you and they would often fill a one inch three ring binder, uh, you know, and put it in a box and mail it to you. So you'd get, you know, less than 15, which is like three months of work to just sift through and organize. And uh, his herbal program was and is one of the most expansive, challenging, um, slightly convoluted <laughs> things I've ever, uh, again, tried to navigate. I haven't, I haven't gotten all the way through it. I'll be honest, it's a lot um, because his brain his mind and his spirit are massive and they are libraries in and of themselves. So everything he shared, everything he created was a veritable tome of herbal wisdom. Uh, that program is still around. I think that his long-term students uh, are still running it and so it's out there. He does not practice a constitutional, temperamental, or diagnostic style of herbalism. It's more, you know, botanical lore, science, uh, personal experience, and it is so beautiful. Um, so for folks who want to go down that wild wandering path, uh, highly recommend, highly recommend. Um, Paul unfortunately passed away uh, on December 30th of 2021. Uh, he was at his home in Houston, Minnesota with uh, his partner Jerry, and when he passed, the ripple of that passing was felt, I think, throughout all of the occult botanists, all of the herbal magic practitioners, all of the spiritual herbalists, uh, even folks who only peripherally understood the scope of his work and the magnitude of, of how plants um, support 
our magic and our spirituality, uh, realizing that we would, you know, get no more new from him was uh, a blow to me and many other people. He, uh, you know, struggled with some, some health stuff, but was otherwise, you know, spry and sharp. And you can see in his videos, even videos that he posted not long before he passed, that he had so much to give. Um, when we lose people like him uh, so soon, it really is so hard. But we are fortunate that he left so many videos, so much writing. And uh, for me, two of the most important books on my bookshelf. So important that they have been purchased and repurchased. I kid you not. 20 plus times each because I give these away to so many people. So um, before we get into the books, I want to say that uh, Paul, for me, is a hero among the modern American, North American occult herbalists. He, his spirit continues to work uh, and remains accessible to folks on this path uh, who call upon him for blessings and inspiration and initiation through his books, which are without rival in the world, in my opinion, his love for plant work lives on. And one of the ways that we can participate in that is to pick these books up and just bathe in them, just soak it up. So uh, without further delay, now that we've met Paul, let's talk about Paul's books. We're gonna do two today, okay? Uh, my joy in talking about this man, by the way, uh, over overflows. Uh, and these books are something to be cherished. So if you don't have them on your shelves, please uh, put them on your wish list. Bring them into your life as soon as you can. The first one we're going to talk about is the Master Book of Herbalism. This was first published in 1984. I was five when this book came out, and that to me is, uh, it's a shell shock, <laughs> right? That um, this kind of material existed in the world. When I came up as a young, you know, 12, 13 year old pagan investigating craft and uh, all of the different aspects of my ancestral pagan practices and modern expressions of, you know, druidry and witchcraft and all of that, pretty much the only really accessible books that you could really find easily were those of Scott Cunningham, which I think we'll probably talk about him at some point because uh, he deserves a lot of accolade and mention as well. These books didn't come on my radar until later because they were just not circulated uh, in the to the extent that, that Scott's were, Scott being published by a huge publishing house, Llewellyn, um, Paul, not so much, smaller publishers. So uh, these came at a time when I think, like I said, if I didn't come across these books, uh, I can't imagine how I may have spun my tires and maybe spun myself out, not, not knowing how much more there was. So let's talk about Master Book of Herbalism, Paul Byrell, 1984. Um, I'm going to give you a little flip through. You can see this is very reference heavy. Lots of sections. And what I really want to pay note to here is the fact that the sections, the chapters, are tiny. Uh, for example, the traditional herbalist chapter is this, this right here. Three, one, two, three paragraphs. What he is able to zip up in three paragraphs is astounding. Uh, it's worth reading these paragraphs hundreds of times. He, he can put into a paragraph uh, the way that an entire tree is concealed in a seed, right? There is uh, magic in this book beyond what I can even explain. So uh, he starts the book off with essentials. What is an herbalist? What does herbalism mean today? Where does herbalism come from? How is our ancestral herbalism rooted in you know, mostly kind of pan-European paganism from the way he wrote. How, how do we connect to that? How do we tap into that? He tells you about how his perspective of a traditional herbalist looks, and I could not agree more. Uh, one of the things that 
I have taken from his books and carry with me consider consistently is what he thinks an herbalist is, who that person is. Uh, very, very important. So um, after that section, he gets into an introduction to the remedial herbal. And this is where he's going to talk about what are tinctures, what are filters, what are love potions, how should you store herbs, how to do tea the proper way, infusions and decoctions, uh, poultices, uh, fixatives, harvesting, herb drying, and some advice from the pro, pro tips. The next section is a guide for the remedial herbal. Now, this one, train two, he does this really nice A to Z. So every single one of these short lines is a common ailment. And then he lists out herbs that later in the book he references for that ailment. So as a way to start exploring the patterns, the personalities of herbs, you could look up uh, cough. And he's got, you know, maybe 10 herbs listed here. From that section, you can then move into the following section where each of those referenced herbs gets its own page or two. So I just opened up to Cleavers. Cleavers has this whole page. There's some quotes from Culpepper and Gerard and Grieve. Then lore, always some plant lore, some remedials. Uh, sometimes he puts some suggested use in there, but you're getting a blend of traditional plant lore, mostly through Greaves. Uh, and Culpepper, and then you're getting remedial that mostly comes through just his collection of experiences over his years, I think. Uh, then, so you get the remedial uses, then you get the herbs themselves, A to Z. Then he gets into dosing, and then my favorite chapter, the herbalist as a magical practitioner. Um, herb gathering, potions and lotions, fluid condensers, incense, oil, balm, magical religious uses of herbs. Then he spends a considerable chunk of this book talking about herbs and astrology. Paul was a professional and exemplary astrologer. So folks who are interested in astrology and the way that astrology and herbs link don't sleep on this book. Uh, it doesn't get talked about in the circles of, of herbal astrologers these days, and that's not my cup of tea, as you probably know. But if you're going to get into it, this book needs to be on your bookshelves. I'm going to see if I can get a little zoom in there. Herbs and the Astrology. Uh, then he does a whole section on herbs and tarot. So linking different tarot cards and their deeper symbolism to herbs. Uh, and then the chapter on amulets is um, stunning. Amulets, the approach of the traditional herbalist. The container, the pentacle, consecration of the amulet, ritual sweeping, the ritual, the circle, sealing amulet, and closing the ritual. Again, through a Wiccan perspective, but easily adjusted to uh, sorceress workings. So much of my work is inspired by his. Uh, once you read this, you'll see it. You'll see uh, herbs and gemstones, really beautiful uh, collaboration between mineral magic and plant magic. The ritual use of herbs, Wheel of the Year, working with the dead, uh, the eight pagan sabbats and different herbs, and then some really beautiful appendices in the back for quick reference. So um, he's got just these lists and lists and lists back there. So this is where I would start with Paul's work, the Master Book of Herbalism. At the time that I purchased this particular copy, it was $21.95. The other one is harder to find and a little more expensive. So start here get used to his voice, you will beat this book up. You will wear the spine off this book and that's exactly what he would want you to do. Uh, it's exactly what I want people to do with my books. Beat it up so bad that you have to get a new copy, right? Um, such a beautiful book. So let's move into the next one. This is a compendium of herbal magic. This is the newer format, I really like it. Uh, filled with notes for me. This one was originally published in 1998. Uh, beautiful and it's beefy it's a little bit bigger book so there's a lot of overlap between these two the difference is that this book goes deeper into plant lore into occult botany it's better indexed it's kind of taking the 101 of master book and taking that same information but representing it in a cleaner way and then going much much deeper I still think it's worth having both books. They have a different vibe. They're reachable for different reasons. There are, there are times when this is the book I go to over this one for different reasons. And again, you'll feel the voice, you know, that he wrote these um, 
what, six, uh, you know, 15, 16 years apart. He was at different places. And so I think that it's worth having both of them. A little overview of what's in here. Uh, the magical classification of herbs, beautiful section of this book, and a guide to the usage of magical herbs. He spells magical with a K to differentiate it from stage uh, illusion, illusory magic, illusion magic. Uh, and then it is a true compendium. I don't know if how visible this is going to be. This is the front index. It is lists of hundreds and hundreds of herbs. Um, each one is given its own entry, sometimes a third of a page, sometimes five pages, and that's the entire book. This is literally an A to Z of plants with references to, you know, Culpepper and Greaves and various occult botanical perspectives and a lot of his personal um, experience with different herbs. So if I open up the book randomly, uh, I open it up to the entry on Lotus. He's going to give scientific names, folk names. He's going to talk about various spiritual and magical applications. And then he always puts an invocatory, which I love, where he's talking about various deities and spirits from different spiritual traditions that have a connection to this plant. Because in his work, the deity, the plant, and the practitioner are always in harmony. So here we get a bunch of lore on Lotus where he's mentioning uh, Lotus being referenced in Homer's Odyssey. He's referencing uh, the deity Brahma from Hinduism. He's referencing uh, Lakshmi and Vishnu. He's uh, referencing Padmasambhava, the lotus born of Tibetan Buddhism. He's of course, course getting into Egyptian mythology with Nefertum, um, Japanese Buddhism, and using this exploration of lore to help us get a Gnostic experience of the spirit of these plants. Again, this was a huge revelation for me. Like he doesn't hand it to you, but the way he presents it, he's telling you there's more, there's more than you think. Then he gets into usage, uh, various applications for each herb, how he might put them to work in ritual, in spells, in medicinal remedies. Um, and then he moves on right on to the next one, Lovage. I mean, this is a, you know, page and a half, maybe two pages total on, on Lotus. So no messing around here at all. The back is a brilliant collection of, of uh, cross references. So he's got uh, quick lore, folk names, planetary, uh, astrological signs, lots of stuff about astrological signs and uh, deities and magical applications. Um, for example, he has herbs listed for concealment, concentration, conception, courage, celibacy, cauldron, blessing, herbs to be used at Beltane. So massive, beautiful, beautiful book. You can see the difference in size here, the difference in scope. Um, this says, oh, at the back, confirms that it's 330 herbs in the compendium. So 330 herbs covered in detail with over 100 botanical illustrations. And uh, apparently at the time this was printed, there were 40,000 copies of this in print. I guarantee that's uh, no longer accurate. It's a lot more than that. So uh, with great adoration and love, and, and uh, gratitude and respect to Paul Byrell, uh, I present you with the Master Book of Herbalism and a Compendium of Herbal Magic and encourage you uh, to get both of these and to dive into them wholeheartedly and fold the pages and leave notes and write in the margins uh, and make them living grammars of your own plant spirit work and all the while uh, invoke the presence of this incredible uh, occult herbalist into your practices. He is responsive and we are all so in debt to everything he did while he was here. I will link information about both of these books and a couple others that he wrote below as well as a link to his YouTube content. Uh, let me know what you think. If this is somebody who's already impacted your work, share some stories with me. Let me know uh, your experiences with Paul. 
I look forward to talking about some more books next month. Thanks very much. See you soon.